Hi, I'm Mike. Nothing on the ranch lasts forever. Tractors eventually will have to be replaced. Cows will come and go. In fact, someday it'll be my time to leave the ranch in better and more capable hands. Today we start the process of updating a piece of the ranch that's essential in making sure that every cow has the care they deserve so that we can do it safely, not only for the cow, but also for us. Today, we dive into the corrals on our Wyoming life. When we think about a farm, the first thing that I usually picture is rolling fields ripe with corn or wheat or soybeans. I see a combine, maybe a cedar. But when I think of a ranch, one of the first things that I picture in my mind is not cows or horses or cowboys or even calves, it's a set of corrals. Corrals, simply put, are a pen or an enclosure for confining or capturing livestock. Occasionally, our corrals on the ranch are used for just that, a place for cows or calves or even pigs to call home and stay close to where somebody can keep them under direct supervision. We use these pens in our corral system to keep heifers that we know are gonna calve soon. They're first time moms. They're notorious for having trouble and uh, also not even really accepting their calves sometimes. So that's why a corral system is actually connected to our barn where we can take those new moms and pen them up in a stall with their new calf for a bit of forced bonding. Or we might keep a sick cow that uh, we know we're gonna have to give medications to, or maybe just the pens become home to a bunch of orphan calves who need a place to stay. Pens are really just the beginning of a good corral system. And saying that the corrals are like, our pens are like saying a car is just somewhere to sit. It's true, but there's much, much more to it than that. Corrals for us are all about cattle handling and working facilities. These corrals are where we brand and vaccinate all of the calves that are born on the ranch. We also take care of their moms here. Each year, they're all brought through multiple times for vaccinations, medications, soundness exams, and of course, preg checking, where every prospective mom is given an ultrasound to not only check and see if she is pregnant, but also how healthy her reproductive system is, and if she may have twins, or sometimes we can even tell the sex of the calf. These corrals are the second set of corrals that the ranch has seen in over its 100 years. The original corrals were built in the late 1920s, early 1930s, and lasted for years until I replaced them about seven years ago. Now, it's time to update this corral system once again, as we incorporate the AeroQuip portable chute, alley, and bud box tub system into it in order to make it safer and easier for both us and the cows. Now, before we get to that, let's take a look at our corral system of the past and how we've modified them over the years to get to this point. The earliest satellite image that I can find of the ranch is this one, taken in 1994, the year I graduated from high school, and also the year that Tanya Harding smacked Nancy Kerrigan, and OJ made a run for it in what has become a famous white bronco. And while I remember it just a little bit clearer, I guess satellite imagery was a lot grainier, and corrals were a lot bigger. Back at that time, Gilbert, my father-in-law, was only running steers and bulls. He would raise them for about a year, fatten them on the ranch, and then sell them off. He really didn't need a corral system. And so, he had a series of pens to hold different livestock and a short alley that led to a loading chute. That was all he needed. Later in his life, Gilbert changed the business model of the ranch, away from feeder steers to a cow-calf operation. He purchased a few cows that were already pregnant and had his first calves on the ranch that spring. Still though, Gilbert kept the same corral system. When we came to the ranch, we used it and we didn't know there was an easier way to do things. And when Gilbert passed away in 2011, we decided to make a change and create a cattle handling facility. One that could be ran with as few people as possible and done safely. The University of Saskatchewan helped us out by providing a set of plans for a new set of corrals that would tie in to what we already had. 
eliminating a number of the large corrals and adding a curving alley to lead cows into a chute and tubs that we could use to move cows into alleys for loading or calves onto the table for branding. All in all, it worked pretty well, although we still had an old chute. In fact, it was the same one left over from our very original corrals and pens. And because of that, we didn't use our own chute to work our cows. We would have the vet bring his own, which meant that we had to call a vet out each time we wanted to work cattle or had an issue that required putting a cow into a chute. Enter the AeroClip Corral System. We had a chance to use this portable system out in the field, and now we're going to upgrade our cattle working facilities by tying it into our existing corrals. Upgrading what we have and creating a better and safer, along with a more economical way, to manage our herd. In only a few weeks, we'll be selling this year's calves, which will soon be followed by preg checking the cows to see who's pregnant and who isn't. Our existing corrals were built specifically for this function, although we've never had a chance to use them for preg checking. In theory, we should be able to bring a cow into this chute and if it wasn't so hard to operate and awkward, then we would find out if she was pregnant or not. We could sort her into one of four different pens just by swinging a couple gates. This is what sold me on this design, and I can't wait to be able to finally use it as it was meant to be used. For that to happen, we're gonna to have to remove a good sized chunk of the corrals as they stand now. Once we have a hole opened up, then we just drop in the AeroQuip chute, alley, and tub. Of course, that's if we had a giant crane or a Chinook helicopter at our disposal. We don't, so it's gonna be a bit more involved than just dropping it in. We have to remove a lot of boards and then take out some posts, but first, we need tools, an impact driver, a bucket for screws, and the perfect song for a montage. Okay, maybe not that one. How about this one?
after tearing down what took probably weeks to build, we're now ready to head on in with the AeroQuip system. Obviously, I can't pull it into place with my pickup, but with a ball fitted onto the forks of the Bobcat, we can start moving it where it needs to be, which turns out to be a bit trickier than I thought it would be. But with some fancy footwork and a bit of back and forth, we end up right where we need to be. Everything on the ranch has to be versatile, but it also has to be adaptable, me included. And being able to do this to some corrals that I spent an entire summer building just seven years ago, uh, kind of breaks my heart. But at the same time, I know that it's better for the ranch, I know that it's better for the cows, and it's better for us in the long run. Thanks for coming along with me today. We still have a lot to do here, obviously. We uh, have some gaps to fill in. We have to figure out how we're gonna get the cows into the new uh, tub and the bud flow system, but that's all to come. Still have some leveling to do, dirt work. I mean, it just goes on and on. But I can guarantee you that when it comes time to preg check this year, we will be using this system and using it to its full extent like it never has been before. Again, thanks for coming along with me. Please subscribe, come along and explore the ranch life. Escape the ordinary three times per week right here on YouTube. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming Life.